Be the Talk, episode 323, featuring Nicole Mullen. Welcome to Be The Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Nicole Mullen. Nicole, are you ready to talk? I am ready. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you, Nathan. Nicole Mullen is the creator of the Hurting the Healing the Whole Workshop, a yoga teacher and a life strategist who is driven by a passion to heal the soul. Nicole uses a mindful approach to teach others how to release fear-based beliefs so that they can create a thriving future. Nicole Mullen, welcome to the talk. Thank you for having me. Your talk is called Becoming Resilient Through Self-Love. And this is just one of those talks, Nicole, where, I mean, kudos to you. Very vulnerable, very transparent. You've had a, a, just a very uh, challenged, uh, many challenges that you have successfully overcome. And you really get into that in the talk. And uh, like many similar uh, talks from people who have also overcome amazing challenges, you reference uh, Viktor Frankl who wrote Man's Search for Meaning, and you have just an amazing three-step uh, framework, which I'm just going to summarize so that we can go deeper. Number one, acknowledge what happened. Number two, ask, how is this affecting me and why? And then number three, act, how do I move forward? So acknowledge, ask, and act. And I found that that has helped me be mindful and present and be able to get unstuck as well. So thank you, Nicole, and take us behind the talk. Right. No, that's exactly what it is. You know, when I when I had started going through my own healing journey about eight years or so ago, maybe a little bit longer, you know, I, I saw bits and pieces kind of show up, but I never really knew what to do with them. And I was actually seeing a therapist who did something called EMDR with me that process, processed emotions within my brain. And the way she would do it is she would call out each emotion that I was starting to feel surface in my body and my mind. And it really did help me break things down and kind of move past it. So then going through my own process in my daily life, I learned that no matter what situation I faced, whether it was something small, like, you know, getting the wrong coffee in Starbucks or maybe getting stuck in traffic or something with work that all I had to do was just call out my emotions and ask why I'm feeling that way, how it's affecting me and kind of break it all down to create this understanding. And it didn't bother me anymore. So I, I learned to take that on a larger scale and, then I did my TEDx talk and that was pretty amazing because I was able to teach others those skills on a live stage versus workshops and things that I do in my yoga world. So that was very exciting for me. You know, Nicole, you mentioned the vehicle of uh, of TEDx and other branded talks. And that I mean, that's really what we talk about here on Be The Talk. Can you speak to, uh, was there a noticeable change for you using the vehicle of, in your case, a TEDx talk, um, the impact when that talk went live, when other people were able to go on YouTube, share it, uh, expand the impact of your message as opposed to the amazing deep dive workshops that you're already doing, but that are limited to a uh, you know, certain number of people within your, uh, your contact base and your network. Um, did you find it to be dramatic? Was it, was it about what you expected? Was it more than what you expected? Was it less than expected? How, how did it work for you? Well, you know, I didn't really go into the TEDx talk with any expectations. You know, I was I was pretty I was pretty honored to have been accepted into it uh, to begin with because when I applied, I guess I never applied with that with that idea of like I'm going to get it. Mm -hmm. And when I got my acceptance email, I was like I was pretty excited. And then I thought, what am I going to teach that is different from my workshops? And I remember the the day that I went to do my TEDx, um, actually right before I got on stage, I completely forgot my entire speech. <laughs> and 
So I said a little prayer and I was like, whatever words you want me to speak, put in my head and let them come out my mouth. And so I got on stage and I did just that. And so I didn't have an expectation of what I wanted to happen afterwards, but I did get a lot of people coming to me, you know, that had been through traumatic situations or just more stressful situations. And I think they found it easier to talk to me versus me just hosting a workshop and talking where I do share a little bit of my personal story in my workshops to kind of get other people to open up and be more vulnerable because we all are connected through vulnerability. And so that's what I try to teach. And so that made it made it way more, I think, welcoming to people. So they approached me easier. Well, there, there really is a reciprocity that happens when you, uh, when, when you become vulnerable, when you tell your story, uh, when you uh, t- share, you know, your personal journey and then other it's almost like a celebrity effect where they're watching a, a video of you, which we're going to give you the link uh, to Talk Universe. But uh, uh, when, when you see someone being so vulnerable, so open, so transparent, it really pull, you know, you really feel very approachable. Uh, to that per you want to approach them, you want to find out more, you want to kind of dig a little deeper, you want to sign up for whatever they're doing. And Nicole, the way that you uh, very artfully opened your talk was uh, it was it was like a, a drama. It was almost like an action movie um, <laughs> in in a sense. And I'm, I, I you know I want to be sensitive about it, but you you crafted it in a very suspenseful way. And you were basically having a debate in your head about escaping a family member. And that was where uh, some of the, the challenges that you've come through uh, started. And uh, just to just to kind of recap all of that stuff, I, I really found it to be really inspiring because when you got to the point where you started advocating for other people, where you started finding it uh, uh, the, the best way to manage your own pain and you know, what you were you're um, responding to was to take back the night and organize some of these different events and to serve other people and to go on a cri- crisis hotline and stand by all night long as part of your journey out. And then yet even beyond that, you were willing to go even deeper and step up beyond that and do the hard work of really facing some of, of the trauma head on. So uh, I'd love, we have a couple of minutes. I'd love for you to kind of speak to that because you didn't just hide behind um, uh, just serving others like a lot of us want to do. And there's nothing wrong with that until you realize that it's, you know, it might become a mechanism at some point instead of serving. And there's something more, even more courageous that we need to do for ourselves many times. And so you step past uh, to whatever stage you needed to, to be able to, to complete uh, not complete for all time, but complete to the current time, your journey. I hope that made sense. That was a little bit wordy, but I'd love for you to speak to that, Nicole. No, absolutely. It did. You know, uh, it, it was definitely funny how my own personal journey unfolded. So I did decide to advocate at the crisis center, Tampa Bay. And like I had mentioned in my talk, I would get called in cause I was the night advocate. And so a lot of times it was after, you know, people had been out or maybe they were home and something happened. And I definitely got to see it kind of in other people's shoes versus my own. So it forced me out of like the whole victim role. And I was able to be there for another person. And that felt truly amazing to be a part of another person's journey to help them even in the tiniest way, whether it was to give something useful to them at that moment, or maybe something they remember five years from now that can help them in their journey. And so I took that and I, I loved it, but it really, it wasn't the only outlet that I wanted. Mm-hmm. So I, when I went and did my yoga teacher training, I, I learned how to connect with people a bit better and that was great, but it also taught me how to connect with myself. And, you know, I am very transparent and vulnerable with my own stuff. So when I, when I share my story, I don't share it in the way of, Hey, look, this has happened to me because I do, I feel completely comfortable with my experiences. You know, I wouldn't change any of it in the world because if it, if it had changed, I wouldn't be where I am now. And I really enjoy being there for other people. Mm. So and that's I, an incredible statement. Talk universe. When you watch 
Nicole's talk and and hear her backstory and what what she's been through that that is really a a, 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 a admirable statement. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the truth is, is we all suffer. That's what I've come to realize, you know, whether you're the predator or the victim or you're the mean boss or the, <laughs> the, the employee that's getting it handed to them. We all have our own form of suffering. And if we don't face our experiences and what's behind that suffering, that's when it can truly impact our environment around us, our own personal energy and other people. And, and so I, I like to help others, you know, kind of unfold their own story, how no matter how big or small it is, so that they can overcome and create this amazing future for themselves and not get stuck. So I, I like to help people get unstuck. Well, so do I. And we've been enjoying this talk with Nicole Mullen. Her talk is called Becoming Resilient Through Self-Love. And uh, we're going to talk even more with Nicole and pivot over to you, Talk Universe, when we enter the Blitz Round. Hey, Talk Universe. I hope you've been enjoying today's episode with today's guest. But you know what? Many people want more than that. Many people that listen to Be The Talk actually want to give a talk. And if that's you, you're not alone. Listen to the rest of this podcast. At the end, I'll have a free resource for you just for listening. And we're back with the Blitz Round with Nicole Mullen. I'm about to ask Nicole a series of either or questions related to the preparation and performance of her recent talk. Nicole, are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> First question you already answered, uh, and uh, you mentioned that you applied to speak. So my new first question is, how did you get accepted, and what advice do you have for the rest of us? Right. So I, I go to the University of South Florida, St. Petersburg currently, and I remember receiving an email for a TEDx talk coming to the school and wanting to see if anyone was interested in applying. And I, I had always wanted to do a TEDx talk because I'm kind of obsessed, obsessed with listening to them. And I love hearing what people have to say. And so I, I sent my email and I got a few emails back asking me like different series of questions to kind of get, I guess, more of a feel of what I wanted to talk about. And so I was accepted and that, that was pretty exciting. I guess the way I approach things is uh, I always voice what I want, but I never have a disappointment if I don't mm -hmm. get it because I know it'll come to me eventually. So, you know, I, I do stand strong in the whole belief of the universe will take care of me and it always has. Mm -hmm. So, What's a uh, tip, tool, or technique that uh, you recommend? To be yourself, 100%. You know, when you are preparing your talk, you're going to get all of the outsider perspectives and just tune them out. Because really, when you get up on stage, you're sharing your voice for other people. You're sharing your thoughts, your opinions, your desires, whatever it is you want to give out to the world. And if you're using other people's outsider information or opinions, then you're never going to be yourself. And people are drawn to you being yourself. So just be yourself. Nicole, uh, with with the, the, the transparent overcoming type talks that I hear that, that uh, yours is one, I always like to ask this question. Where's the line? in your opinion, in terms of your, your sharing a very, you know, traumatic uh, story, uh, your backstory, you're being very transparent. And uh, for new speakers or unaware speakers or speakers that just maybe don't do the hard enough work to avoid oversharing or over uh, emoting, from the stage, there's a real line right there where you, you give the audience what we need to, to stay with you and lean in, but not so much that it's overly heavy or depressing or hopeless for us. What did you do? Because you didn't do that at all. You, 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 you kind of brought us right along really skillfully, really masterfully. Um, and obviously that's very intentional. Um, where, where do you feel like that line is? And can you kind of help me articulate uh, what you did to make your talk so successful? Right. Thank you, Nathan. So where I always like to begin is what is 
what is my intention with what I'm trying to achieve? So what is the desired outcome? So like you were saying is you want it to be more of a positive speech. So not so much stuck into the the pain and the suffering and the misery that I'm trying to project that I had gone through. So any speaker who is looking to do that, I would say that number one, find your intention. What is the desired outcome? And then write your speech and your story based on your desired outcome. And that'll really kind of help as a guideline as to where it's going to go. Well, we've been enjoying this blitz round with Nicole Mullen. Uh, her talk is called Becoming, Becoming Resilient Through Self-Love. And we're going to have a link to it in our show notes page at bethetalk.com. Or you can type that into YouTube if you prefer. Uh, you can also connect with Nicole uh, at NicoleMullen.com, N-I-C-H-O-L-E, Mullen with two L's, dot com. And we'll have a link to her website on the show notes page as well. Uh, and uh, she's got amazing workshops, amazing programs, uh, and um, just a, a real treasure trove of uh of, uh, of resources for you as well. And we're going to be right back with Nicole Mullen in just a moment for the final word of advice. Hey, Talk Universe, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want to give the talk to change the world, but you don't know how or even where to start, no problem at all. Go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted for my new five day email course that'll show you how absolutely free. Just go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted. And we're back with Nicole Mullen. It's time for the final word of advice. Awesome. So my final word of advice is to never shove anything down, no matter what you're going through. So always be okay with things surfacing when they do. Never trap your emotions and understand that things are only temporary. So as long as you accept them, that they're just a state of mind, just as anger is the same as happiness. It's all something that we're experiencing. So take a mindful approach. Just pay attention to where you are at the moment and know that everything will just work its way out. Well, Nicole Mullen, thank you so much for carving out time in your busy schedule today to come on the talk and to share your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you for having me. I'm so super excited to have joined you today, and I really appreciate the time. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to bethetalk.com. See you tomorrow.